and lo, I see the power of God coming and a cloud covering the whole earth. Go out to meet him and say, Tell us, art thou he that should come to reign over thy people Israel? I am more rich and poor, one with another. Go out to meet him and say, Hear, O thou shepherd of Israel, thou that leadest Joseph like a sheep. Tell us, art thou he that should come? Stir up thy strength, O Lord, and come. To reign over thy people, Israel. <laughs> Children forever. Glory 
to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning is now and will be forever. Amen. Samuel. When the king was settled in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, See now, I am living in a house of cedar, but the ark of God stays in a tent. Nathan said to the king, Go do all that you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that same night the word of the Lord came to Nathan, Go and tell my servant David, Thus says the Lord, are you the one to build me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day, but I have been moving about in a tent and a tabernacle. Wherever I have moved about among all the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel, whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now therefore, thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep to be prince over my people Israel. And I have been with you wherever you went, and have cut off all your enemies from before you. And I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and will plant them so that they may live in their own place and be disturbed no more. And evildoers shall afflict them no more, as formerly from the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel, and I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. Your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Wait for the Lord, whose day is near. Wait for the Lord, be strong, take heart. Wait for the Lord, whose day The angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor, David. 
He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son, and this in the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. We are now at the cusp. We're now at the very cusp of our annual remembrance of Christ's incarnation, God's presence, God's presence come among us in Jesus. Our text today on the fourth Sunday of Advent remind us of the way that this Hebrew God, this, this Jewish divine, chooses to dwell among God's people. How this Jewish God chooses to dwell among God's people, and that is by camping, by being tented, perched on the edge of all hopefulness. Today, Mary receives a most astonishing announcement that Israel's hope and consolation will be born in her, born in her. And hers is the question each of us, any of us would ask, how, how? As impossible as possibility gets, her womb, as this story goes, is to be that tent. It is to be that tent for a time till he moves on, till he moves on into the lives and hearts, the memories of others, inspiring hope and action for generations to come. That hope and consolation have become ours. That hope and consolation have become ours and ours to bear into the world in remembrance of him, in remembrance of her. She who asked no other questions, simply, hugely said, let it be. As Denise Levertov uh, writes in her poem, Annunciation, Mary consents. Mary consents. This was the moment no one speaks of, writes Levertov. This is the moment no one speaks of, when she could still refuse. A breath unbreathed. Spirit suspended, waiting. She did not cry, I cannot, I am not worthy, nor I have no strength. She did not submit with gritted teeth, raging, coerced. Bravest of all humans, consent illumined her. The room filled with light, the lily glowed in it, iridescent wings, consent, courage unparalleled. Courage unparalleled opened her utterly. 
Mary's let it be. Mary's let it be is her consent, her agreeing to participate in the work of God in this world. David, if we'll remember, David was a similarly unlikely, can, an unlikely candidate to bear the mantle of Israel's king, God's man to bring peace to the world. Recall that David was a young shepherd boy, as our text today says, still following the sheep. When God chose him over all his older brothers. David is all grown up now and he has found his way into the palace, the king's palace made for him. And now he'd like to do a little something for God to make the old man happy in his old age. Enough of a God who lives in a tent, the Ark of the Covenant, let's build him a big fine house too offers David. But the Holy One has no desire, no desire whatsoever to be established, no interest in being kept. Tented will this God be. Our human enterprise has tended to try housing God. Our human enterprise has tended, we've tended to try to house God, control power, define the mystery, participate on terms that suit us. And the invitation, the invitation to enter into the wild let it be of Mary must await another season. divine life. The divine life remains perched on the side of hopefulness, making possible what, may, what we may never imagine ourselves. The waiting of this season is ended. Possibility stands perched before you, before me. An invitation, an open offer awaits our consent, waits our consent to enter into God's wild new adventure in human incarnation. May your let it be, may your let it be bring light to this world and open you utterly. I believe in God, the, the Father, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead, on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. 
For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Purify our conscience, Almighty God, by your daily visitation, that your Son, Jesus Christ, at his coming, may find in us a mansion prepared for himself, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Ever faithful God, through prophets and angels, you promised to raise up a holy child who would establish a household of peace and justice. Open our hearts to receive your Son, that we may open our doors to welcome all people as sisters and brothers, and establish your household in our time. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Welcome to St. Luke Church on this fourth Sunday of Advent. May your hearts be ready for something new. May the season of Christ's uh, entrance upon this world in new and fresh ways evoke uh, a world of grace at a time of peace. Join us in this place uh, after the liturgy by clicking uh, coffee hour and you can gather with us at, 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 through Zoom. Uh, you may click Give in order to contribute to St. Luke Church uh, and our ministry together. Welcome to this day, and may uh, the coming um, Christmas season fill your hearts with peace.
all things are yours, O God. We give of ourselves so that our lives may be transformed and made new, shared with the world. Bless and preserve, keep and share these gifts for your bounty. Rejoicing with Mary that the word comes among us, let us offer to God our prayers, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. May we find in Mary, the servant of the Lord, the model of our heart's willing surrender to God's call. For this, let us pray to the Lord. May we discover in true spiritual virginity the richness of what God alone can do to make Christ come alive in Mary, in us, and in all the world. For this, let us pray to the Lord. May the God of mystery who dwells in unapproachable light draw us more and more deeply into the path of divine wisdom beyond all human expectation. For this, let us pray to the Lord. May our assembly of disciples be a womb and a place for the shaping of Christ by God's power so that we may give birth to Christ from the womb of our community for the world. For this, let us pray to the Lord. May our deepest hearts find strength in the gift of blessed hope that what God has begun to do in our world and in all our persons by Christ's saving work will be brought to its fullness by our Savior. For this, let us pray to the Lord. May we remember before God all who are in any need and who cry for the presence of God. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Call us to yourself, O God, as you called Mary, that we may be formed into a dwelling of holiness, giving life to all the peoples of the world through Mary's Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Accept, O Lord, our thanks, thanks and, and praise for all that you have done for us. We thank you for the splendor of the whole creation, for the beauty of this world, for the wonder of life, and for the mystery of love. We thank you for the blessing of family and friends, and for the loving care which surrounds us on every side. We thank you for setting us at tasks which demand our best efforts, and for leading us to accomplishments which satisfy and delight us. We thank you also for those disappointments and failures that lead us to acknowledge our dependence on you alone. Above all, we thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, for the truth of his word and the example of his life, for his steadfast obedience by which he overcame temptation, for his dying through which he overcame death, and for his rising to life again in which we are raised to the life of your kingdom. Grant us the gift of your Spirit, that we may know him and make him known, and through him, at all times and in all places, may give thanks to you in all things. Amen. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God. The blessing of God Almighty, the Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer of life, be with you this day and always. Thank you.
Let us go forth in peace. In the name of Christ.